This is the D2 Hydrolyte Digital Free Water Detector. As you can see, it's plugged in. Simply flip the switch to turn it on, at which point you'll see the screen illuminate. Here is the verification shuttle used with this instrument. This allows you to determine and ensure whether your instrument is working properly by inserting the shuttle and obtaining a high reading on the large surface area side and a low reading on the small surface area side. You always want to allow your screen to update three times before you take your reading. The verification shuttle will have printed ranges on it that allow you to determine whether or not your reading is valid or within the proper range. Always following ASTM D3240. Once your instrument has been verified that it's working within the proper range, a fuel sample can be passed through a test pad we're using an unused test pad for demonstration purposes. The pad is placed carefully using tweezers into the test shuttle, which is inserted into the instrument. The instrument then will provide a reading as this is an unused test pad. It's showing a reading of zero as it should. As a final point, the pad should always be face up in the shuttle orange side face up or colored side face up. And as a final note, make sure you always follow ASTM D3240 when taking a fuel sample. Test, you need a digital free water detector pad. This pad is gonna allow you to pass a fuel sample through in order to determine how much free water is in that fuel. Open up the pad and very carefully remove it with tweezers, ensuring you don't ever touch the surface of the pad. Before we run the test, just for demonstration purposes, this you wouldn't normally do, we're gonna take the pad and put it in our test shuttle as you would do when running a test. Insert that into the instrument and we can see an unused pad should have a result of zero ppm, as it does here. We remove this pad, I'm using tweezers to touch it, and take a look at the pad surface. It should be an even orange color that's unfaded, and there should be no creases, wrinkles, tears. The pad should be relatively perfect as far as the appearance of the surface goes. When taking a fuel sample, you should always follow ASTM D3240. The pad will be taken facing upstream and have 500 milliliters of fuel passed through it. After this point, the pad is removed from the sampling apparatus. It is blotted using blotting paper per ASTM D3240. It would then, at that point, be reinserted in your shuttle carefully, face up, color side face up, inserted in your instrument, and a reading would be taken at this point. The presence of water, free water in your fuel, is visually observable on the pad as the surface will change from an orange to yellow color. The more free water in the pad, the more the surface will fluoresce. There are a variety of different sampling apparatus that can be used. Here we have a typical inline sampling apparatus, which can be opened up, with the pad inserted inside. At that point, the sampling apparatus would be closed. Attached to a fuel line, valve opened, and 500 mLs of a sample allowed to flow over the pad into a collection container. Other sampling apparatus include using a vacuum flask and an adapter. The pad can be inserted into 
this sampling apparatus, orange side facing where the bottle will eventually go. This would be closed, placed into the top of your vacuum flask. A 500 milliliter sample can be placed in a high density polyethylene uh, HDPE bottle, which would be placed upside down. Vacuum pump line attached here and the 500 ml sample sucked through the pad, at which point the sample bottle is empty. The pad would be retrieved to run your test. Finally, we have the D2 vacuum test kit with a sampling apparatus here. It can be carefully opened. The pad placed on this surface face up. This is closed. The apparatus is placed in the holder of the vacuum sampling kit. And then a 500 milliliter test fuel sample is poured into the apparatus and the vacuum turned on to allow the fuel to flow through the pad.